Well, I think cosmology that tells us we live in a universe that is going to live forever, that goes on to infinity, where time and space are, you know, intermixed. That's a, it's a lot to get your head around. And there's a real philosophy about what you can and cannot know. So I think one of the things I find most intriguing about the universe is the bounds of our knowledge. What can we know and what is just actually not knowable because we don't have the information. For example, are we alone in, is this universe alone or are there infinite numbers of universes? And how do we test things like that? That's really hard and I find that actually quite intriguing. So cosmology has a lot of big uh, issues to think about. The one thing I think we're trying to figure out is, is this universe that I helped discover with our team that the universe is made up of dark energy, 70%, dark matter, 25%, and 5% atoms. Is that actually right? We're beginning to see little cracks form where it doesn't quite describe the universe. It's very close. So I think that's one of the big questions. But then there's some bigger questions. Was, for example, we know from astronomy neutrinos have mass, but the standard model of particle physics says they shouldn't really. Uh, we know the universe has matter now, and matter and antimatter we would have expected from particle physics to kind of cancel each other out early in the universe, so there shouldn't be any matter at all in the universe. It should just be photons. And we know that for some reason there's sort of a one part in a billion asymmetry in those reactions early in the universe. So what's going on there? Uh, I think there's a big question in cosmology more as astronomical. Uh, what's going on with black holes? We look and we see these ginormous black holes across the universe, even back in time. And it's not clear they should be there. So I think that's another question we're trying to understand. Time travel po is possible because you're traveling in time right now. One second, one second, one second. Now, it turns out if I go very fast towards an object, my time and the time of the object I'm going towards or the object I'm going away, they become desynchronized because I'm moving through space time. And so you can move forward in time this way. So if I go fast enough, I can get to Alpha Centauri, the nearest star, which is 4.3 light years away, in a few seconds. But you on Earth watching me, it will take 4.3 years for me to get there. So I am able to travel forward in time, but there's no way to travel back that we know of. And indeed, most people would think that if you could travel back in time, the whole universe would uh, not make sense. It would probably end instantly. Well, I was here uh, a little over five years ago, and what I'm seeing is that uh, the campus is looking spectacular. There's a lot of new buildings, a lot of new activity, so it's been a really exciting visit, and I guess I'm just really excited to see what's going on at IAT Madras, and I've told my team there's a lot of action happening here, and uh, in the next five and ten years, I just think there's so much to look forward to. I think you're in a wonderful place, uh, you know, and take the opportunity to, I guess, do well in your studies, but all these uh, clubs and things you can do in extracurricular look really, really great. And I think uh, take a chance to, I guess, do some of the things that uh, IIT Madras is offering, whether it's a startup or maybe even working with someone overseas like at ANU or anything in between. I just think that. Uh, you have a real exciting chance here, uh, and so you got to do make sure you take those chances because you don't get them for your entire life. They, it's a very special time in their lives, and they should know that. <laughs>